Thank you, Chairpersons, for this kind and warm introduction. I would like to extend my thanks to Dr. Rutul, Dr. Amit Day, and Dr. Tharveen Panchal for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this wonderful event. I'm glad to be here. And I will be talking about best practice with SMBG. Um, OK. So I think my slides are visible. I will be talking about SMBG in pregnancy in Taiwan. Taiwans are like very close. I've been working with Taiwan since so long. All good to go? Um, audible, my slides are visible, all good. Yeah, right. Thank you so much. Sorry, thank you. So as we all know that type 1 itself is an autoimmune disorder and there might be various comorbidities like uh, adrenal insufficiency or hypothyroidism or another autoimmune disorder might be present once you're dealing with type 1. And they're entirely insulinopenic. The day of diagnosis, we need to start them on insulin. And certainly the management itself is very challenging, especially like once they're diagnosed with type 1 and then it's pregnancy, the lot of things which we need to be uh, addressed. Living with type 1 is not easy. Like for a day, 24 hours manually dosing and injecting insulin to survive, watching blood sugar like a hawk. 24 hours counting the carbs, you know, it's very easy for us to tell them like you need to count your carbs, take your dose accordingly and whatever you eat, you need to be vigilant. So 24 hours continuous vigilant for their food and 24 hours beeping, poking, squeezing, bleeding and feeling highs and lows. So it's certainly not very easy to live with type 1 for a day. And then comes up with pregnancy. So I will be not talking about type 1. I'm, I'm focusing here more of the care and preconception care for the women with established type 1 diagnosis. All women should be counseled pre uh, if they are planning pregnancy at their childbearing age. They should be taught about uh, the laboratory investigation like HbA1c or sodium potassium or thyroid needs to be ruled out if they're planning pregnancy. Uncontrolled diabetes should be taken care of pre-pregnancy and medications such as statins, ACE or ARBCs should be avoided for a minimum of six months once you are uh, planning, uh, any, any woman planning with pregnancy who is type 1. These are potential contraindication to pregnancy who has ischemic heart disease or who are untreated active proliferative retinopathy, renal insufficiency or severe gastroenteropathy, they should be counseled if at all. They have established diabetes. Tell them what could be the contra. These are the contraindication and what could be the uh, like precautions they need to take if at all they are planning pregnancy. So this is preconception glucose control for women with type one. As per American Diabetic Association, preconception HbA1c should be less than seven percent, or American Association of Clinical Endocrinology said it should be less than six point five percent. So we have individualized target, and now the woman has conceived. So post-conception care. So diabetes in pregnancy, the management goals are like quite vast. We need to educate. And uh, this year, World Diabetes uh, Day theme is educate today, protect tomorrow. So this is the theme. So we need to take out some time, if, especially if you're dealing with Taiwan, educate. Educate is the you know awareness. The more they are aware, the more that they would deal better with their diabetes. Counseling regarding adequate nutrition, glucose control before conception, during, and postpartum. Maintain close to normal glycemic control. They should avoid complications uh, like micro macrovascular complications. Weekly, weekly HbA1c is though not recommended in India, but in US it is recommended. And they do weekly HbA1c people who could afford it, who are not doing SMBG regularly. So for us, the patient safety is our should be our first priority. The, these are the glycemic target for GDM, as very well mentioned by Dr. Dengra and uh, my another co-speaker. And they mentioned about GDM, the preprandial less than 95, one hour postprandial, like one, 140 and two hours, postprandial 120 milligram per DL. Whereas pre-existing type 1 or type 2, pre-meal 60 to 99. Peak, uh, peak, peak uh, postprandial, like that is uh, two hours after meal, 100 to 129 or 130, or HbA1c should be less than six. These are AD recommendations 
and we all see like this is what i usually follow in my clinic i make sure that their pre meal blood sugar or fasting should be less than 90 one hour less than 140 and two hours less than 120 so if you could maintain these target throughout the pregnancy the outcome would be great and these are some expert recommendations they say like uh, this is what i follow and hba1c less than 5 and H- though hba1c does not hold much value in pregnancy especially either is type 1 or type 2 but if at all they are not doing anything like the few of our patient who don't do anything they would just come madam sip hba1c ho gaya to isi se aap dekh lijiye so this also we we clinician need to address this issue also so if they are maintaining the hba1c like less than 5 or 5.6 or something they're going doing good so if you're maintaining the tight glucose control during pregnancy the outcomes are really good you are preventing them from any serious perinatal complications shoulder dystocia admission to neonatal uh, nursery and jaundice requiring phototherapy so these are the possible uh, outcomes with good tight uh, control we we are preventing from uh, to our patients diabetes in pregnancy the management uh, once they are they are pregnant so we need to have an entire team of dietitian ophthalmologists to rule out any proliferative di- diabetic retinopathy or endocrinologists or a certified diabetologist nurse educator should be there to take care of our patients and there should be a checklist it should a uh, combination of glucose monitoring medical nutri- nutrition therapy pharmacotherapy exercise base management and psychological support which is certainly needed if you are dealing with type 1 so what is smbg smbg is self monitoring of blood glucose in one of my study i did it in uh, where i am from kanpur and i did it here people have glucometer still they don't do and why they don't do because they have needle phobia they don't want to prick themselves they have some visual impairment or readings are not appropriate that's what happens when the patient uh, who have glucometer but they are not doing smbg regularly so you need to tell them the techniques the targets the recommendations what the glucometer does at least they have something to see like hypo and hyperglycemic patterns and we uh, the healthcare phys- physicians should able to do some ed- additional education wherever we if we find time and these are like uh, we need to have a uh, you know planned smbg we should tell our patients uh, especially type 1 like they should do all pre or fasting pre meals and one hour or two hour post meal and we as we know the targets so we can judge them accordingly and smbg trust me remains a cornerstone of glucose management people in our country they and they cannot afford like uh, as a you know they they are not able to afford the technology so they if they have a very customized smbg we can deal very well with the pregnancy thing so this is my case she is 31 year old primary gravida why 31 year old because marriage itself is a issue in type 1 especially type 1 like they still consider as sick lady so people do not want to get married to a type 1 women and th- this is a big issue so she got married late at the year of uh, like at the age of 30 school teacher at 6 weeks of gestation she had two miscarriages in a span of like one and a half year and cause is still not known no other autoimmune disorder preconception fasting was 110 postprandial 140 hba1c7 no family history of diabetes and she was asked to do smbg at regular interval customized customization of smbg was done insulin dose titration was taught start walking and refer to gynecologist for the further advice these are laboratory investigations hba1c current hba1c was 7.9 fasting 120 postpandal 170 albumin creatinine ratio tss hemoglobin rest all were not significant so we could focus more on uh, the management part especially uh, the pattern uh, dose titration the diet part do the smbg regularly minimum 3 times a day and fasting was like falling between 80 to 95 two hours post prandial to uh, post breakfast was 110 120 and so on ultrasound was normal we we could do it like subsequently visit and since this was a precious pregnancy 
and needed more intensive glycemic control. I will not talk more about technology here because that's not my domain. I need to speak, stick to the SMBG part. And these are the images of SMBG of my patient. And you can see here the initial, the fasting was high and postprandial was high too. And this is a customized chart we follow here. Uh, Kali Pate is fasting two hours after breakfast, pre-lunch, two hours post-lunch, pre-dinner, two hours post-dinner, and 2 a.m. was uh, recommended to her. And subsequently visit, I've not put the entire images here. And these are the few images of her blood sugar reading, where you can see like fasting was appropriately, like beautiful reading she could do. And the outcome was uh, phenomenally good. She delivered at 38 weeks, underwent LSES. Yeah, I, I did one of my study. It was a retrospective study of around some 33 or 34 patients of type 1. And uh, they most of the patients, they go under LSCS. And the reason is not known. They conceive naturally, but they perform caesarean. They have been uh, going under caesarean section. So this could be because the pregnancy itself is a very precious. Type 1 is a complicated diagnosis. And a lot of comorbidities might, might be present at the time. So they, uh, the gynecologist, they preferred to do LSCS. Fetal birth weight was appropriate, 2.8 kgs, and there was no uh, pre-maternal uh, and fetal post of um, uh, the condition was stable. And so this was the study. It was an Indian study retrospectively observed patient with type 1, 34 patients were included, and HbA1c maternal and fetal outcome were evaluated. Patients were divided into two who received continuous uh, insulin infusion and who were on MDI, that is a uh, basal and bolus therapy, one time lantus and three times uh, regular insulin was prescribed. And HbA1c level was done in each trimester wise, baseline first and second, third, third trimester. And these are the comparison of maternal and fetal outcome where none of the, uh, we, uh, we had seen their duration, Abgar scoring, newborn birth weight, hypoglycemia, congenital anomalies, Patient who were on insulin pump or MDI, the p-value was not significant in any. So what it it concludes? It concludes that if you are maintaining your patients very well on basal bolus, in spite uh, like if you do not use technology as well with SMBG and basal bolus therapy, the outcome can be fair enough. So you just need to be customized. And there's certain limitation with HbA1c also. Like it doesn't tell the hypo and hyperglycemia. The peaks, the excursion cannot be ruled out. Magnitude and frequency of intra and interday glucose variations cannot be identified. And conditions like anemia, hemoglobinopathies, iron deficiencies, this can, this could, in these conditions, the HbA1c would not give an accurate reading. So for this, we need, we need, we have technologies to take care of, and we have some limitations of SMBG. You tell your patient to do six point reading, they would come with three. You tell them to do three, they would come only with one. So this is the limitation. As I said, they have little phobia, or I've seen patients who, whose readings are like day to day, every, all the readings are same. So this, this is what happens. And hypo hyper episodes may go undetected and the readings are intermittent. So just to overcome how to come with this and have better compliance, we have CGM and insulin pump. So that these sessions will be taken care in the evening probably. And the key points to learn, SMBG still remains the cornerstones. Once you are dealing your patients who are at the peripheries, SMBG still remains the uh, cornerstone in management. Dose titration, it is important once you're dealing with type 1 diabetes, pre and post conception counseling is mandatory. It's like, you need to deal once the, like I've been seeing my patients since their childhood, once they're diagnosed, now they are getting married, their sexual life, their pre and post conception counseling, there are lots to do in time, one lots to do. And motivation psychological assessment is, is like should be offered because they are dealing with a very, as I said in one of my previous slides, it is not easy, you know, poking every time. Uh, like whatever you are eating, you need to be very vigilant. So these, this should be offered, you know, they're, they're psychologically depressed. And these are few images of my type one women. There's like, I'm working with here, very renowned endocrinologist here. He has long follow up patients. And this is like all type one patients. And these uh, extreme right is uh, both uh, the husband, wife, both are type one. They have a daughter now and they, they conceive naturally deliver, they're all doing good. And the kids are also doing good. You know, none of the child have been diagnosed with Taiwan. So that's a blessing. Thank you for patient hearing.